Hello, in this video I will begin by preparing the base mesh by creating the attribute that I can use to separate the stone and metal parts. You can download the base meshes along with the project files, which you can find with the video series on sidefx.com forward slash pegasus or follow the link in the video description. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a geometry node and then double click to come inside and drop down a file node which I can use to load the first file. So alongside my Houdini file, I've got a geometry folder and in here a folder called prop meshes with a few different files. And you'll find all of these base meshes in the project files. So I'm just going to load the first file to begin with. And you can see here I've got this large tombstone. So this is for the church area of the project Pegasus map. And these are just going to be used to uh, set dress the area around near the church. And I want to build a procedural workflow, a procedural network that will take this base mesh and turn it into the high poly model that I'll be importing into Unreal using Nanite. And this tombstone is going to be made of a couple of different materials. We've got this main stone body of the tombstone, and then this kind of metal um, plate in the center here with some text on it. And then on the stone itself, I want to have some moss growing on top. So we're going to have a few different materials that make up this object. So what I want to do is be able to split this object into, first of all, two, two separate parts. The part that's the stone and then the part that's the metal. So what I'm going to do is add an attribute or create an attribute that I can use to separate these two parts. So I'm, just, I'm going to add a name node. And rather than having this attribute called name, I'm going to call it tag. And then if I come to this arrow here and select it, I've now got this um, selection mode enabled. If I just double click the stone area, currently that area is all one single piece of geometry. So when I double clicked it, it selected it all. And then if I'm hovering over the viewport, if I hit enter or return, you can see it's added that selection as this group. Now I'm going to enter a name for this. So I'm going to call this stone. And I can click this little plus icon here to add another name field. So let's select this metal area. And this metal area and all these letters are all separate bits of geometry. And I don't want to go through double clicking all of those. So instead, what I'm going to do is just drag a box selection over all the metal areas and then holding control. You can see this little um, negative minus icon that's appeared next to my mouse. If I double click on that stone geometry, it will just deselect it all. So now that I'm just selecting that metal area, again, hovering over the uh, my mouse over the viewport, hit return and it's added that selection in this group field. So this is going to be called metal. So here I've created this tag attribute and I've applied uh, the name stone and the name metal to these two different selections. Now if I come over to the geometry spreadsheet, come over to the primitives, you can see here I've got that uh, tag attribute and then here is the stone. If I just come down, here is the metal. And just to visualize those two attributes, I'm going to add an attribute wrangle. And in here, I'm just going to type some vex expressions. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable called seed, which is going to be an integer. So I'm going to type int for integer and the name of the variable, which is seed. And this is going to be equal to, I'm going to type an expression called random s hash, open brackets. When I did that, this uh, box appeared, which gives us some information. So random s hash hashes a string into an integer. So it's going to convert a string to uh, a kind of random integer. So if I type now s, at tag, I'm taking the tag attribute that I created previously. It's I want it to be a string, so I'm prefixing it with this s. Close brackets, followed by a semicolon. Now what I can do if I add another line is type in at cd for the color attribute. So we're going to create a color attribute 
equal to rand for random, open brackets. Here again, I have some more information about this expression. So this creates a random number between zero and one from a seed value. And I'm gonna use this variable that I just created called seed. So type in seed, close brackets, followed by semicolon, and click in the network view. And everything's green, and that's because I'm running over points. But I created that tag attribute on primitives. So let's switch to primitives, and there we go. Now I've got a random color assigned to the areas that have those two different tags. So that's just to visualize those two attributes, so you can see kind of where they're applied to, and make sure they're applied correctly. So it looks like I've selected everything, but just to be sure, what I'm going to do is after this file node, before the name node, is add an exploded view. So this just moves away the uh, different bits of geometry. And if I just click this attribute wrangle again, you can see I've got a floating piece of geometry here, which I've missed. So I'm going to come back to this name node, come back to the selection for the stone, and just holding shift, I'm going to double click on that piece of geometry as well. Again, hitting return, and let's preview this attribute wrangle. There we go. I've now got all those bits of geometry selected. And I can now disable that exploded view. That concludes this video. In the next video, I will move on to taking this base mesh and generating the procedural stone.